And here it is, guys. Not as crazy as the AFC. We no. talked about top to bottom in the AFC. It felt like not just the teams in the seating, but in the hunt had significant things to play for. Barry, you look at this NFC playoff picture. What jumps out to you right here? Well, the fact that uh, the Eagles, the Cowboys, the Giants all are all, are all in. Yes. The Commanders, the only <laughs> team in the Why NFC the East to not make the playoffs. Good job. Hail the Commanders. Hail Victory. I feel your pain with the Jets in uh, the AFC East. Yeah. You know, it, it's just, by the way, I, I think – there's for the last remaining spot. There's three great stories, right? I mean, so if Geno Smith wins and gets, you know, if Geno Smith wins and the Lions win, Seahawks are in, and what an amazing story that would be. You know, they wrote him off. He ain't right back. Uh, be incredible for the Seahawks to be in the playoffs. The Lions, if the Rams beat the Seahawks, then it is win or get it, win and get in for the Lions Packers Sunday night right here on NBC and Peacock. I am a company man. So that would be amazing. What an amazing game. Lions versus Packers. Whoever wins that game is playing uh, postseason football. And, you know, we talk, We joked in the beginning of the year, Jay, about Dan Campbell, coach of the year. Yeah. Like, he won't get it. But, like, if they end up getting to the playoffs, yeah. he absolutely deserves a lot of votes. Yeah. Well, how about Pete Carroll? That was supposed to be the worst yeah. team in the league. And now yeah. they're 8-8. Eight eight. They're probably going to be 9-8 because they're six-point favorites over the Rams, even if they don't get in. Like, that's an amazing – I think we lose sight as the year goes on about, like, these teams, we kind of just think the Seahawks are just a solid team now. No, they were supposed to be a mess. People wanted Drew Locke to be yeah. the starter for that team. I was like, oh, why are they starting Geno Smith? Now Geno Smith's been a top-10 quarterback in the NFL. With the win, is he comeback player of the year? I think so. If he gets the win, I just think he's the best story. Yeah. I think Saquon Barkley has an argument, but – Gino was nowhere. And Brian Robinson does not get a well, – he's he not eligible. Win. He should win, yes. but he's not eligible. So I think it probably will be Gino if he wins this week. Let's jump right into the games here, guys. The Giants at Philadelphia. The Eagles are now 14-point favorites. Here's the thing with the Giants. They are locked into the sixth seed no matter what. They are one of the rare teams in this final week that truly could be resting everybody. We'll see. But with Philadelphia – they need to win this game. As we start at the top of the show with Jalen Hurts practicing with the first team this week, they need to win this game to clinch the number one seed against that Giants rush defense, Barry. Maybe backups. Bounce back spot for Booby Sanders? Yeah, I think so. Look, you think about that Week 14 game against these same Giants, 18 for 155 and two touchdowns. Giants have allowed the fourth most rushing yards per game to opposing running backs this season, and that was with their starters. And again, now you're looking at, at, uh, at backups, Brian Dayball on resting starters, this is the quote, we'll do what we think is best for the team and sit down and have conversations, which to me is like, <laughs> we're sitting guys. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, like what's yeah. best for the team is none of their starters get hurt in a meaningless game. Yep. They, they cannot improve their playoff position here. Yeah, I think there's some history with that franchise where they played against the Patriots back in 2007 to like try and stop the perfect season. They lost 38-35, and people point to that game as really setting the Giants on the Super Bowl path, but it was probably a bad decision for the Giants to play their guys that game. What if Eli Manning got hurt? So, right. yeah, I don't think we're not going to see any... We're not going to see New York Giants starters for the whole game, certainly. Jay, yeah. is, this a, is this a trap line, or do you think the Eagles actually smoke the Giants' backups? No, it's not a trap line. Yeah. <laughs> I think, I think, the, yeah, I think the, the play might be Eagles minus 14. Uh, I've spoken to people who bet professionally on the, the NFL who say that this is basically the most lopsided matchup in NFL history when you consider the incentives, the fact that the Eagles, they have to win to get the one seed, and the Giants are playing for absolutely nothing. And also, when the Giants played their starters, they lost by 26 at home to the Eagles a month ago. Moving along here, Cardinals travel to San Francisco to play the 49ers. The 49ers also 14-point favorites in this game. San Francisco, though, they're still alive for that number one seed. Arizona obviously eliminated, so we're assuming San Francisco playing to win this game. I think the question here is, guys, how much do we see out of Christian McCaffrey? How much do we see out of Debo Samuel? Barry, how do you break down the Niners' rush attack? Yeah, I don't think it's a lot. I mean, because I think, to your point, we I think they probably expect – uh, they expect the Eagles to win this one, and so they're going to play for the they're going to play for the two seed here. I think you'll see a decent amount of Jordan Mason. Look, I, Chris McCaffrey is one of those guys that all he needs is one play, and I think he'll get some run in this game. Like, remember, he still came over in midseason. I'm at running back too, but uh, he's not without risk. 
this week. Like if I was playing DFS, I'm probably not using them except as maybe a contrarian play because there's a chance they, they their starters don't play a full complement of snaps. Yeah, there's some weirdness here where if I was San Francisco, I might almost prefer the three seed because then you get to play the Giants as opposed to potentially the Packers. And then you go on the road to Minnesota where you're going to be favored anyway. But I think the problem is, is that even if they wanted to lose the game to the Cardinals, I don't think they can. <laughs> it's one of those right. things with like uh, Ahmad Bradshaw trying not to score the touchdown at the Super Bowl, but he just falls in because uh, the momentum is too much. So yeah, I think the Niners, they'll be, they'll be playing their guys but I wouldn't be surprised if you don't see McCaffrey that much in the second half. One thing that's and it and it's worth noting though that there all these games are at um so the the Giants Eagles game is also the late window. Yep. So I mean so again like you'd think Giants Eagles so that's probably a one o'clock game but it's actually a wait, late window. So they won't know. San Francisco won't know whether they're locked into the two or not because Eagles and Giants will be playing at the same time. But to your point I think they probably I don't think you see a full complement of snaps from everyone, except maybe Brock Purdy, who just needs the experience. Yep. And the thing is, like, they might be up twenty-eight nothing at halftime. The Niners, so that might be the that might be the the benching incentive in the second half. Speaking of that number two seed, the Vikings, who are still in play for seven and a half point favorites as they travel to Chicago to play Nathan Peterman. Here's the situation with Minnesota: they can get the number two seed if they win this game, which we're assuming they have a good chance of doing, and if the Niners somehow lost to the Cardinals, and we heard from Vikings head coach Kevin O'Connell on the thought of sitting his starters. Do you foresee that you would would go like not playing Kirk Cousins or not playing Justin Jefferson, or if you do make some adjustments, it would be more subtle than that? Yeah, I think it would probably be more subtle than that, um, Kevin, just knowing that the two seed is still uh, available for us. Uh, I imagine we'll probably be playing at the same time. Um, as, as uh, you know, San Fran or anybody else fine for, you know, movement amongst the seeds. Uh, so it's set up in, a, in that way. And, and regardless, we still have a lot to play for just from a momentum standpoint. Yeah, for the record, they won't be playing at the same time. They'll be playing earlier. So the San Francisco game is in the 4 o'clock window. Vikings-Bears is in the 1 o'clock window as well. And... Even if they decide to sit some of their starters for a little bit, and I don't think they will, three quarters against the Bears might be enough. I I mean, like, the Bears just – this is a Bears team that, to your point, is going to start Nathan Peterman, um, who possibly throws a pick or a turnover or certainly doesn't generate a ton of long drives. So you're figuring the Vikings are starting a lot of these drives in in good field position uh, as well, a short field. I have Cousins at QB6. I have Dalvin Cook at at running back five. Jefferson Jefferson, obviously number one wide receiver. Hawkinson, my number three tight end. I think you're starting the normal Vikings you would. Yeah, and we talked about this yesterday, Matthew, but I'd be shocked if this line finishes at seven and a half just because of the scheduling and because they're not going to know that the two seed is out for them. And then... Like, this is going to be the worst offense in football with the, with the Bears, with Peterman on that side. And then also the defense is not very good either. So, <laughs> yeah, might helping. be the worst defense in football as well. So, I think also, Justin Jefferson needs 194 receiving yards to break the all-time record, Calvin Johnson's record. Now, mo- normally you would say, well, he's not going to get 194 receiving yards. In this yards. game, yes, he can. He might in this yes, game. He, can. he might in this game. Wow. All right. Especially, by the way, after last week. Exactly. He's oh, yes. really motivated. Oh, yeah. All right. Buccaneers at the Falcons here in uh, what's been one hell of a division this season. <laughs> no denying that. The Falcons are favored by four points. Tampa Bay is locked into the number four seed. That is what explains the line of the Falcons being favored by more than a field goal in this one. But we did hear from Todd Bowles on the thought of sitting his starters where that's something he would not guarantee for this Tampa team. No, but we can get better at a lot of things. So right now, I plan on playing them. Uh, we'll see as the week goes forward. But we can get better at a lot of things that we need to work on. And we don't need to take our foot off the gas. Yeah, it's, it's Sounds a like great our production point. calls. What? We just sit there and we, we, can get, we can get better at some things. Uh, yeah, all the, yeah. All, all the time. All the time. What I would say is... Uh, and I like the fact that he's 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 now off the milk and cookies, now focused. <laughs> he's right though. This is not this is not a team that can be like ah we got this. This is a team that's still sloppy that still has a lot of things to clean up on both sides of the ball. My expectation here is yeah that they they play their full complement of starters. Yeah, it's a weird like right now the line is Atlanta minus four. 
home to Tampa. Like, that's not a real line. That's not that's not what the line is going to be because if they rest their guys, then it would be minus six and a half, seven. And then if Tampa was going to play their guys the whole game, then they would be favored over the Falcons. So right. it's a little bit of a mess. But yeah, I would expect that they probably play them the first half or so. And then, but it's just, it's very difficult to figure out. And what I really want is the NFL to just remove the Tampa Bay Buccaneers from the playoffs and just give that spot to Seattle or Detroit. Honestly, <laughs> this team does not deserve a playoff spot. Yeah, it doesn't. But that's the way it uh, it's all set up. I, I do think that because of the defense, that even a half or three quarters of a game against this Bears defense makes them viable. Brady comes in at QB8 for me. I have Godwin at wide receiver 9. Mike Evans at wide receiver 15. Those are the guys that you're obviously starting. You can check my ranks out on Rotor World if you want to talk about the running backs here. But I feel good about the passing attack here against the Bears, even in a, a, short, a potentially short game for them. Cowboys traveling to play the Commanders. They are favored by seven and a half points right now, as we discussed earlier. Sam, Sam Howell, Howell. No, Sam no Howell respect for no. Sam Howell. Here's the deal. The Commanders eliminated, but with Dallas, they are still alive for both the number one and number two seeds, depending on the outcome of a lot of matchups. And, of course, them needing to take care of business against the fighting Sam Howells. Ezekiel Elliott has a chance here to score for his 10th straight game. Barry, do you think he could pull that off? Yes, I do. <laughs> you know, I mean, look, yeah, I mean, look, first off, he's getting the opportunity when they're getting close. They obviously love Zeke. Um, Washington commander's defensive line is banged up. The whole defense, uh, you know, kind of fell apart last week against the Cleveland Browns. So Ezekiel Elliott, who's had six straight games with 17 touches, including a lot of, you know, high value touches in the red zone and in goal to go situations. I think he gets a couple here and I think he cashes one in. What's your grade for the commander's season? C plus? I mean, their yeah. record is they're going to pretty much hit their win total. Yeah, I think so. you see plus B minus. You know, I mean, look, they they lost some close ones, but you know what? Then they 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 kept their heads in it and they won a bunch of close ones. The team rallied around Heineke. The defense shored itself up sure. much sooner than it did last year. Last year it was defense was awful until like the last third of the year. I felt like so. Uh, there's obviously a lot of positives on defense, and um, look, we you know coming out of the draft, I'll just say like. Washington, like Jahan Dotson and Brian Robinson yep. are freaking ballers. Yep. Like, come and we'll see what they got in Howell. Like, you know, this was, like, I think the Commanders actually had a very good draft, and that proved it out uh, um, this year. I'm going to say right now, I'm going to be keeping an eye on the Howell props for this game if they're yeah. set very, very low. I actually think he has a good performance against the Cowboys secondary. Yep. So we'll see what he can do I would in love his that. debut. I would love that. Moving over to the Rams against the Seahawks. The Seahawks obviously fighting for their playoff lives now in a couple weeks in a row here. Seattle needs to win this game. They need to take care of business at home against the Rams. Who, let's not forget, the Rams did give them a scare not that long ago. Seattle oh, yes. had to win that at the end of the game. But Seattle needs to win this game. And on Sunday night football here on NBC, they need Green Bay to lose against the Lions. And then Geno Smith's Seahawks are in. So everything is on the line for Seattle. Yeah, and I think, you know, listen, it's a pretty narrow. Look, you're starting Tyler Lockett. You're starting DK Metcalf. You're starting Ken Walker. Bingo, bango. Yep, and Geno. I think you feel okay starting Geno. That's the Rams' defense has been hasn't really fallen off a cliff. It, like I expected the Rams' defense to without Aaron Donald, without having anything to yeah. play for. They're still solid enough. It's super weird. I mean, the Rams have like the, the last two weeks. The Rams have looked like totally different teams. So you're never really sure which team is going to show up here in uh, in this one. But I think uh, playing at home. Seattle, knowing that they got a shot at getting in the playoffs, I think they have a good game. Yep. I think with Geno as well, I mean, he hasn't been great the past couple of months. He's just not, not be, he hasn't been the guy he was the first five weeks of the season, but I think he should be able to put up enough stats in a game they're six-point favorites. Last game in the NFC playoff picture here on Sunday Night Football. The Lions travel to Green Bay. Everything could be on the line. This could be an incredible matchup in terms of the implications on Sunday night. Detroit, they need to win this game, and they need Seattle to lose to the Rams, and then they're in. Green Bay, they clinch the number seven seed as long as they win this game. Let's get back to Detroit here, Barry. Which Lions running back do you feel better about against the Packers? I'll, I'll say DeAndre Swift. I mean, look, Packers are a bottom 10 defense in terms of most receptions allowed to running back. Obviously, Swift uh, heavily involved in their passing game. 117 total yards last week with the two touchdowns. He looked like DeAndre Swift. He looked like, he's like, oh, yeah, that's right. This guy's really fast. Justin Jefferson was banged up. We'll see if he plays again their, their third down back. But, yeah, if I have to pick one of these guys, give me Swift. Having said that, you'll see a decent amount of Jamal Williams. Both guys are top 30 for me. Swift's at 22, Jamal Williams at 28. You can run on the Packers. Yep. 
My play for this game, betting-wise, you can do a parlay on BetMGM. You take the Rams' money line and the Lions' money line. Because if the Rams win, then the Lions have everything to play for. That's 8-1. to one. And you can do it the other way, too. You take Seattle and Green Bay. There's a huge correlation oh, I like there. that, yeah. Yep. Okay, good. Last one here, real quick, like guys. That. Aaron Rodgers, a, a must-start in this game. Is he saving his best for last? Real quick. Yeah, Star Rodgers? So. Yeah, okay. yeah, he's going to go my, off in the match. He's, he's my QB7. I mean, Lions okay. are going to the most fantasy points to quarterbacks this year. Yeah, start right. Aaron Rodgers. We yeah. will take one last break. When we are back, it is time for last call. We will be talking about our best picks for Offensive Rookie of the Year. Hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBC Sports and Rotoworld.com. Just want to thank you so much for watching what you just watched or at least being too lazy to click out of it after the you know autoplay just kept it going so either way thank you so much for just letting it scroll by your screen and now i'd like to ask you respectfully 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 okay respectfully please subscribe to the nfl on nbc youtube channel for the latest nfl news fantasy headlines from rotor world and betting analysis from nbc sports edge